I will, I, I miss. Yeah, yes, I, I will. I promise you. I, 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 thank you very much. Yes, I, I, I will, I will. As soon as I get out of sight, I'm having these shoes off for sure. Still, it was kind of her to give them to me. And even kinder of her old man for letting me have them. Well, he didn't need them no more. Not much good to him in the middle of Bridlington Bay. That's where they scattered his ashes. I've got a pair of his socks in the bag as well. I, I didn't take mine off and put them on. Well, not in front of her. No, I couldn't let her see my feet. She'd have had me in the bath. And then where would he have been? If you get my drift. Socks never been worn, I shouldn't wonder. Like the shoes, brand spanking new. I'll have to do something about these shoes or sell them on. The good quality, you know. Nothing but the best for Arthur. Without a doubt, a very diplomatic dog. Oh, they nearly knew them. Very good quality. Nothing but the best for Arthur. God rest his soul. <laughs> oh, there you are then. I'll have to do something about them though. They're too small, you see. But they are the best. And like I said, there's nothing but the best for Arthur. It's very decent of you, Arthur, to let me have your shoes. I know you'll be pleased they've been put to good use. As indeed have your trousers. Yes, very much appreciated they are. No, and I didn't put them on in front of Iris. It wouldn't have been proper. Let's have a look what else is in the bank. Mm. Iris is goodie bag. Ooh, she spoils me, Arthur. <laughs> she knows I like hobnobs. They are my favourite. But I don't want you to think I'm trying to pull anything. Not trying to step into your shoes, as it were. <laughs> That's a good one, isn't it? Like I said, I wouldn't mind if I could, with any degree of comfort, that is. You have to laugh, though. Oh yeah, Arthur. If you'd only been a size 11 instead of a ten and a half, that half size bigger would have made all the difference in the world. Oh, I mustn't grumble. Wonder what happened to my shoes. All my pants for that matter. Did the wife find a good home for them? Still, she gave me a good send off. So I couldn't complain. Mind you, I do think coffins are a waste of money. And mine was a real beauty. Mm. Genuine brass handles it had. Not your plastic things. Brass plate on the top as well. Norman Harold Blenkinsop Warrington. 34 letters of engraving. Plus the date of my demise. Bet that didn't come cheap. Everyone dressed in black. Hmm, the missus looked a treat. Black always did suit her. Some women can carry it off, I find. You know, I think it was the first time I've seen my brothers in suits at all. Even at our dad's funeral. They only wore black armbands. But Emily did look a smasher. Hat and veil, black gloves and all. She didn't even take them off when she tossed the earth onto the coffin, along with the white carnation. She knew I liked white carnations. I'd often put one in my buttonhole when I went to the shop. My managers would wear them as well on <laughs> special occasions. 
Yes. Some of them and some of the other staff wore them at the funeral. <laughs> well, such as them have got over the fire, that is. They all looked suitably solemn. Yes, suitably solemn. I think they were genuinely sorry that I was gone. They had no cause for complaint. Oh no, I treated my staff very well. And in return they gave me good service and their loyalty. I often wonder how they're all getting on. Emily as well. I hope she's had a happy life. How old will she be now? I wish his age I shouldn't wonder. Oh, she was certainly a good looker. She's more than likely married again. Hmm. Perhaps she's had kids. We never did. I'd like to have been a father, but it never happened. Hmm. Hobnobs. Emily would never buy hobnobs. In fact, she wasn't for biscuits at all. Said they encouraged bad eating habits. Said they spoiled the appetite for a proper meal. But in all fairness, she was good at preparing. Proper meals, that is. A good cook was Emily. Everyone said so. But biscuits were a no-no. Oh, then what else have we got in here? Mm. Let's have a look. Good old Iris, bless her. <laughs> this would have been a definite Emily no-no. As were cigars, cigarettes, pipes, spirits, wines, except for a glass of sherry at Christmas. And communion wine, of course. She didn't approve of certain newspapers, television, pop music, continental holidays, putting your feet up on the settee. And she was very good looking. A very good looking woman was Emily. That's what I fell for. I fell for her looks. And she fell for my... Wonder what sometimes she did fall for. Because in the minute we were married, she proceeded to want to change me. The way I dressed, the food I ate, what I did with my spare time. Well, she never interfered with my work. No, I'll say that for Emily. She never interfered with the business. Never put her two pennies in there. But she did look lovely at the funeral. And what's more, she shed tears. Yes, genuine tears. Now that did surprise me. I never ever saw Emily shed tears. Even when our dog got run over. A woman very much given him to... Uh, very much given to control over her emotions. <laughs> Look at me, psychologist all of a sudden. Well, it's all part of the job, you know. Yes, the job. My job. Being a tramp. Oh, it's not as easy as it seems. But it is very rewarding. I suppose you could well think of me as being a therapist. Doing people good whenever I can. Well... Look how much good I do, Iris, if you know what I mean, Arthur. She looks forward to my visits. They're a kind of therapy for her. <laughs> she, she calls me her gentleman of the road. <laughs> a bit old-fashioned is Iris, but you know, I like that. I find it quite charming. I should imagine I'm very good for a lot of people. Oh, yes. You know, I often notice for walking along looking so heavy-hearted, weighed down with troubles, trials and tribulations. And they catch sight of me, and they presto, they feel better. Immediately, they think life isn't too bad after all. It's quite amazing how I do it, without any, without any effort on my part, I might add. Mind you, our lives aren't always a bowl of cherries. Even a gentleman of the road has his ups and downs. Like that poor blighter I ran into on my way to the shop. That fateful day. Still, he had a good send-off and dressed well for the occasion. Though I have to admit that he thought it was odd swapping clothes. I explained to him that it was all to do with a, a practical joke I was playing on my staff. And wasn't it fortunate that 
we were the same build and took the same sizes. Before we got down to that bit like swapping clothes, uh, I bought him a slap up breakfast, treated him to a bottle of my finest scotch. Oh, I kept a few bottles. Yeah, in the office, well, special occasions, you know. And this was a very special occasion. Emily never knew, of course. She wouldn't have approved it at all, as we know. It didn't take him long to polish that bottle off. Comatose he was in no time. Wouldn't have felt a thing. Nobody ever questioned that it was me who perished in the fire. And they knew there'd been money problems with the company. Hmm. A good send off. <laughs> A very good send off. Well, I must be on my way doing a few more good works. My specials. <laughs> very well worn in there. Can't beat a bit of comfort. Yes. <coughs> Ooh, a bit right. Oh, yeah. I am my special shoes. Thanks again, Arthur. I'll find a good use for you. You don't need to worry. Oh. Right then. Oh. Yeah, that there. <laughs> 